Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist V building something shiny, something mirror chromy shiny. I just dug this guy up out of a box where I'd kept him in place for a V build and kind of forgot. This is Arms Micron Sundercracker. This was uh, an exclusive, I, I think, to Aeon. I'm not quite sure. He came out around about the same time as that exclusive of the deluxe Optimus Prime as Orion Pax, who I never got because he looked kind of boring. But. I'm going to put together his special shiny version of Baro. Uh, the other thing that put me off that Optimus Prime Orion Pax was that his special shiny Micron was just Ratchets again. Ratchets uh, Micron has like 50,000 variations over the course of, uh, of the Arms Micron history. And uh, that was a real, I remember at the time, real nail in the coffin on me wanting to have anything to do with it. Because I was like, I, I don't dislike Ratchets... Arms Micron, but I don't need it this many times, and I'd already passed on it several other times, because I got it, like, once or twice, and I was like, that's good. This thing looks good with Ratchet. It doesn't really belong anywhere else, in my opinion. So I'm getting the, uh, Spark Crystal in place now. Hopefully on my first try I can get this thing lined up in here. I don't remember if the Vac Metal Chroming on this, uh, caused any widespread issues. The one thing I'm worried about is whether or not it has messed with the ability for this stuff to, like, use the proper designed tolerances, because everything is a little bit thicker. I guess we'll find out right here, because this thing is, uh, all about friction. It's a little tight. I don't know if it's so tight that it's going to shred itself apart. But they, they literally just, like, dipped the sprue. Like, as you can see here, the sprue is all shiny and stuff. And so, in doing that, uh, they basically created a whole lot of uh, potential little problems. Like, every little spot where I trimmed one of these parts off of the sprue. Um, it's kind of hard to see, honestly, because so much stuff is reflecting. But, you know, there are bite marks in here from the nippers because there was no way to not cut through some of the chrome. And, uh, I'm okay with that, because, like I said, this thing's so chromey. That little marks here and there are probably going to happen anyway, so I don't mind them existing now and then on my copy. But that's definitely something that I know a lot of people are not into. I remember there was a, like, a sh I think there was, like, a shiny Gundam kit at some point. Well, I'm sure there's been a shiny Gundam kit at some point. But I know I saw some Twitter chatter from some folks who were trying to build one where getting the parts off of the sprue were, uh, well, was quite a task on several levels. So this is, a uh, Shining Silver Barrow, and I'm kind of liking the, uh, the color palette on him, but with his just adding some shiny purple stickers to his shiny silver chrome body. Uh, I think the overall effect of that looks very cool and extremely Decepticon. And I think that the sticker layouts on this guy, at a glance, and you know, I did it many years ago, uh, they appear to be pretty much the, uh, the Skywarp and Borrow sticker sheet just done in different colors. Like, uh, Thundercracker over there has got Skywarp's, uh, toe stickers, only, uh, in, in black rather than... I believe Skywarp's were in a mirror silver? I was just looking at that toy, like, yesterday. Now I can't remember because, you know, early onset Alzheimer's joke, something, something about that. It's number six. Yeah. I'll take the picture out a little bit. Might be a... A little, a whole lot of, uh, of vac metal filling your screen there, or your viewing window, and that might be unpleasant. I uh, will just have a little whole lot of it filling a small part of your viewing window. Uh, these are the more metallic looking stickers. They are not... I remember Skywarps being almost a little elastic-ish. Uh, these feel more papery, which is kind of a bummer, because I also remember Skywarps had this kind of elastic, chromey uh, consistency that bonded super tightly to uh, the surfaces they were placed on. And uh, a lot of other Arms Micron sticker sheets that were more papery, I also found 
needed a lot more help sticking. And I'd like to avoid having to glue any of these down if I can, at least on borrow here, because I don't know how glue and all this vac metalization will play. Probably pretty badly. Hey, come on. But, uh, a little, little bit looking ahead to the future. Uh, there are still a couple of little arms micron kits here and there that I never actually filmed and still have sitting ready to be built. They don't take up much room. So, uh, I'm generally saving those for live V-builds because I think Arms Micron just plays well live. It's, uh, it's a kind of a quick build. It's a little bit of sticker and a little bit of building. Uh, usually small kits. So, it works well with the live stream environment, I find. We got these things on here. Speaking of, Angry Birds Transformers. Uh, iOS finally got the update for, you know, anything, and so I, I could not not notice this. I went through looking at all the, uh, you know, the purchasable costume bits you can get for your uh, transforming Angry Birds, which all cost the, those points, those crystal points that I don't spend because they're the ones that you're encouraged to use real money to purchase more of, and one thing I really love doing is getting freemium games and then not putting money into them. Uh... Thundercracker is in that game, and his thing that made me really blink, he's got a costume add-on piece, and it's basically this. It is a, it's Barrow in his throwing star formation rather than his drill formation. So there's an Arms Micron Thundercracker reference in Angry Birds Transformers. Uh, Arms Micron Thundercracker was a lower-run store-exclusive toy in Japan that a lot of people kind of ignored. So that, that, that is taking things to a level I can really appreciate. And uh, that comment I made earlier about this just being uh, Skywarp's sticker sheet with new colors is wrong, I'm realizing, because Skywarp's sticker sheet had horn stickers for Barrow. This one does not have horn stickers. Uh, I guess this is an original sticker sheet, and if I actually were to hold the toys up next to each other, I'd see more differences. But I am lazy, and I... Skywarp, is, he's in a box over there, and I'm not going all the way over there to pick him up, but here's Silver Barrow. That looks sharp. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's gouty as hell. It's uh, it's vac metal chrome. It's picking up fingerprints even as I was cutting pieces off the, the frame. Probably going to chip a whole lot very fast, but in this moment, uh, this looks like a, you know, it's a lucky draw arms micron, and that's kind of, that's kind of fun. Uh, we got stickers to put onto uh, Sundercracker himself, so we're going to move on over to that part of the V-Build activity. Uh, there are only two stickers that, you know, quote-unquote, require him in vehicle mode, and they're just on his wings. All I have to do is do a little bit of deductive concentration, and uh, I can do them in robot mode. So, we probably won't need to go through a mode swap here. But... Realizing this is a bad vantage point for my knife to be attached, so I'm going to switch it to the toe. I kind of ran my finger tip along the blade just there. Uh, luckily, I got lucky. Uh, as for you, dear viewer, don't run your hand along finger blade tips. I'm. That was really dumb of me. Anyway, that's the point I was trying to make. This is, okay, this focus is, now that there's not a super shiny thing, the focus is flipping out. <laughs> so I've hopefully even that out to a good level. And I'll also see if I wrap this on the right, but this looks like I did it right, hooray. Uh, so I, I was just messing with some of my Arms Micron stuff the other night, getting it more organized in uh, in where I've got it stored. And uh, yeah, these, these toe stickers on Skywarp freaked me out because they are... They were riding right up to the edge, and uh, so on these ones I'm I'm playing it a little bit more safely. If you look at them super close, I guess you will see a bit of blue near the tip, but uh, Skywarps, I think, only managed to hold on to, you know, being placed closer to the bottom of the foot because they were that more elastic, super, super sticky, tight silver sticker material. Uh, and these ones are definitely way more, like, paper. So 
So I'm aligning them more along the sculpted ridge, well ridge, the sculpt, the detail sculpting uh, that the top of these stickers has been patterned after. And it still looks fine, it's just not riding like all the way perfectly right down to the toe where the toe touches the ground. I mean, I could also just go in and paint these parts, it's very paint by numbers, there is literally a, like a shape to paint inside, but... You know, it's Arms Micron. Got it. We are doing the stickers. That is what we are here to do. There's going to be two more stickers that are basically taking the place of a very easy paint app. But that's why we're here. We aren't here to V-paint. That's a one video, as of this recording, one video, one-off little thing I did once where I took a video of a thing after I painted it, and then I, I didn't really paint anything since then. I've actually misplaced my uh, my painting kit. I have a, a Spider-Man lunchbox that I keep all my acrylic paints and Gundam markers in. And for the last year, I have not been able to figure out where I put it. I don't think I lost it, but I have no flipping idea where it is. And uh, I still haven't got off my rear end and just bought new paints and Gundam markers. Which is kind of a shame, because... Uh, I mean, Gundam markers are one of the lowest end ways to paint, I'm sure, second only to the Sharpie. But I really liked them. They were a fun way for certain colors to just, you know, take a, a cheaper model kit, like a mini pla, and just Gundam marker in, like, for instance, gu black Gundam markers were super fun, because it was actually kind of a thick primer level... Well, maybe not primer level, but it was a thick paint that, that cured really, really solid and hard. And uh, on some mini plot kits, like even if I wasn't planning to paint all of them, anything that was black, I loved just taking the black Gundam marker in there because it, it adhered to the surface of the sculpt super well. Uh, it would be perfect for these, actually. And uh, I really should just get a new one. Someday. Somewhere. Somehow. I remember this part being garbage on Skywarp and he had a better adhering sticker material. This is gonna suck. I'm trying to get this centeredly, evenly applied over a surface with lots of curvatures. Let's see if I fingernail this down a little bit. Okay, I think that works. Just apply some pressure, get it to get it to sink in there. Lay down on that plastic and suck tight. I think I'm happy with that. I think I'm happy with that. Yeah, it looks okay. Alright, what's next? Uh, oh, stuff on his back. Okay. So, 17 and 16 go onto his arm fins. I don't remember what shape of those are. I don't know why I'm flipping up his kneecaps either. It's not like anyone cares. But... Oh man, you know what else? I, I, gotta, I gotta flip these up too. Otherwise, what kind of a fan am I? So, 17 goes on the left one. Uh, hmm. How does this shape work? Alright, I think I get it. This one is not perfectly filling out a sculpted shape, it is only filling out parts of a sculpted shape. That threw me for a second. But it's alright, we're gonna have a go at this. If everything goes wrong, then we'll all just disavow knowledge of this horrible episode ever having taken place. Whoop. Alright, that seems alright. Yeah, it's like a little arrow. Let's do the other one. Hopefully not put my knife through my finger while I'm doing it. I was wondering what I would do if I actively just started bleeding while recording one of these. My instinct is just keep filming and put it up. Traffic, the hits. But I know that the sight of blood can make some people very uncomfortable, if not outright nauseous. So I'd probably... I don't know. It might cost some shock value, but I'd probably end up having a warning come up before anything happened in post. 
just for the sake of uh, the more fragile or uh, the weaker stomached. A little bit of that girlish empathy of mine coming up again. Man, empathy. What a world we live in where that is looked down upon. And by that I mean what a gross world. All right, red stripes on his back fins. Number 14 left. Curvy bit on the bottom. Oh, thank goodness you can kind of see what's happening, because the lights are super in the way of my hands when I'm trying to do this. All right. So I found a somewhat comfortable position, and then I was like, hey, I wonder if anyone can see. And, you know, you could. Hooray. At least you could when I glanced at the viewfinder. I don't know if you can now, because I'm looking at the sticker. I'm just trying to get this thing laid down in a way that'll keep me happy. I feel pretty happy about that. Let's get the other one down. There are a couple of spare Decepticon symbol stickers on here that are not numbered. I'm assuming the idea is, aside from just being spare Decepticon symbols, they're like, hey, you want to put these on his wings? I don't know if I want to put them on his wings. I don't know if, uh, if, if my Thundercracker needs to ride that style. I could place this a little more symmetrically with the other one. There we go. You know, I kind of like the idea of something that's at least vaguely a bit more of a robot in disguise. I mean, granted, he's, you know, a military-class jet flying around that's bright blue, but, you know, at least he's not flying around like that and broadcasting, I'm also an evil Decepticon, guys! Uh, now we've got these two stickers for the wings. I think I could probably look here and see where they're supposed to go. Well, I'll take a I'll take a look at the instruction sheet back here. They go on the yeah okay. They go into these spaces here. So if you're worrying him like this, number ten goes over here. And ah, I see. There's a slanted cut on one end of this stripe. And that goes near the uh, ridge of the wing. I assume it goes near the ridge of the wing. This is horribly awkward. Let's go down here. Ah. Slightly better. Not too much better. Fix the focus with a knife in my hand. Hey, I did it without killing me or my equipment. I think a pat on the back is deserved. Congratulate me. I was watching uh, the latest AGDQ. And uh, I generally enjoyed it. thought it was pretty cool. There's one thing that kind of made me quirk an eyebrow now and then, though. and I think it only happened really once in the videos I watched so far or the parts of the stream I saw. I don't, even, I don't even remember who was playing, but there was a guy playing, and this is not meant to in, be a, a damnation of, you know, AGDQ in general. Just one guy playing, and I don't I don't think he even... I doubt he meant ill by doing it, but at one point he said, You can clap, by the way, when the crowd wasn't clapping, and then the, cloud, the, the crowd began to clap. Something about that f seemed a little bit like, come on, dude, like, don't... You don't have to tell them they can clap. Like, if they choose not to clap, they're not clapping. That means just continue on, and you know you're you're already keeping my interest up enormously with with what you're doing here. I mean, I wasn't live at the event, but uh, it just felt weird. Um, and I like I said, I don't think it was uh, anything malicious, anything ego driven. Maybe it was. It just didn't, it didn't feel like that to me. Felt like definitely one could take it that way very easily, but to my own perception, I felt it was just a gentleman who is uh, trying to connect with the live audience in a way that, you know, maybe you tried it once, it seemed super weird. Let's just let's chalk that up to experience. I don't know why that stuck with me, but uh, I just remember when that, that uh, moment happened while I was watching and I was just like, hold on, what? <laughs> that seemed weird. 
This thing did not go on properly. Don't applaud at this one. Pardon my silence, I'm... I'm concentrating upon the wing. Alright, I'm a bit happier with that. I don't know, maybe uh, I'm alone here, but if anyone out there, you know, in the comments checked out AGDQ this year and had anything they enjoyed, feel free to share it. I, uh, I really liked the Tetris the Grandmaster uh, segment. I think that was... There were a couple really good segments. Um, the Boshy segment was the one that was... I was first linked to that got me to go like, you know what, maybe I'll watch this while it's going on. Because usually I wait till AGDQ is done and then kind of blitz through a lot of it, barring some of the live stream stuff. Like a little while ago, when I forgot which one it was at, when they were doing the Chrono Trigger uh, speed run to finish it off. I watched pretty much 80% of that live because I really liked it. Uh, stickers are done, by the way. Hooray! You can applaud now. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was checking out a lot more of this year's AGDQ uh, while... It happened, and it was kind of neat. But anyway, that's uh, Arms Micron Thundercracker, all uh, metallic red stickered up. He looks pretty sharp. Um, I really like this the basic plastic color they used for this guy. And uh, we got little Baro here. There's a mode for Baro detailed on the back, and this looks weird to me. I'm going to give it a shot. This doesn't look like what I did with Baro, where you just turn him into a drill or a throwing star. But uh, it looks like you put him in a throwing star position. This clip came off already. That's better. Now what are we doing here? It looks like he's... It looks like you're just taking him like this. And there's like a... Is there a fold-up? Oh, there is like a little... There's a little rectangular joint here. Did... Did I do this last time and I've only... Just forgotten that I did this last time? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, but we got... No, we gotta fold this up now. That's... I don't remember this being in the instructions on Skywarp. What, I'm sticking this in here? Or below it? Below it, I guess. Uh... Um... Hey... It, uh... That sucks! That's dumb! No, I... Anyway, that's been uh, Arms Micron Thundercracker and Silver Shining Barrow. That's been uh, another V-Build dead this time. And uh, we'll build some more for you soon as possible.